Locking mechanisms fascinate me. Two years ago, I came across this image of possibly the world's oldest lock and recreated it using 3D printing. So suffice to say, when I stumbled across this video during the rounds on social media, I was immediately curious. I had never seen a lock like it, so back down the rabbit hole we go in recreating this unusual locking mechanism using 3D printing technology. We'll figure out how it works and why it's still in use in some parts of the world today. Let's get started. How's it going guys? Angus here from Makers Muse. And what I have here is my 3D printed recreation of a lock which translates to English as a rack lock. Like I said, my only point to go on was this very short video. Sadly, I can't find the original author, so if anyone knows, please let me know. I want to credit them in the video description. The reason it's so unusual is the manner in which it opens the door. Every other key you've probably ever seen operates in a rotating movement. You put the key in the cylinder, it engages the pins and providing it's the right key, they align along the shear line and the lock will open. This thing though is completely different in design and operation. The key opens the lock with a forward and back motion. And the key looks like some kind of crazy cut rasp or file. Close inspection reveals the mechanism though as some kind of mangled rack gear, that's even the appropriate term. But interestingly enough, I was unable to find anything like it in my 507 mechanical movements book, which makes it even more unique with the angled contact resulting in perpendicular movement of the bolt to unlock the door. Although it's possible I missed it. This is quite a big book and there's a lot of mechanisms inside. But how can a gear be secure enough to act as a lock? Well, I firmly believe in learning through experimenting, so I created this simple version in Fusion 360. In this design, the key has a 30 degree attack angle, and this results in a small gear reduction between the key's movement and the bolt. And this design works pretty well, but there's an obvious flaw here. The tooth spacing is uniform. Doesn't seem very secure to me. But this is where things get pretty interesting. If you look closely at the original image, you can see that the teeth have variable spacing. So by simply adjusting the tooth spacing, you can create unique keys which mate perfectly with their corresponding bolt, but nothing else. I did this in Fusion using collinear constraints, and this makes it quick and easy to adjust the spacing to churn out new unique locks as required. In this design, a rubber band provides the spring return force, and it's somewhat addictive to play with. It also highlights the fact that the key has to remain in the lock to keep it open, which is somewhat unusual. So that's fun, but I just had to find out more about the origin of this lock, and apologies to all of my Russian subscribers who have already been screaming at the screen till this point, because it seems that this design originates from there, albeit a relic of the past, and as Ruslan stated on Twitter, it's more of an alternative to a latch, not a proper lock, as I'll soon explain. So according to my research, rack locks or are absolutely bulletproof and won't freeze up in the middle of the harsh Russian winters, unlike many more modern delicate lock designs. Therefore, they're often used to secure sheds and garages, like we saw in the video, and I've also seen them in videos used to secure security doors on old apartment blocks in front of the main door. My final design is based on a quite common design I found during my research with two bolts which open simultaneously using the one key. I also included locking screws in the back to deadlock it from the inside, a feature I did notice in the original design. This would serve to bind up the mechanism from the inside for maximum security. One thing I didn't include in this version which the original did have is a spring to force the lock back in position and the key out but I just wanted to leave it out so you could easily view the mechanism in action. Similar to the single bolt design, the tooth spacing can be adjusted easily to create different keys. This version has the same tooth pattern mirrored, however you could also make the top and bottom different. It should still work as long as the spacing is perfect, and I might try that in future, but regardless of what pattern and spacing you choose, the attack angle must always be constant for the mechanism to work. You can't vary that or it's gonna bind up. So I chose 30 degrees and that seems to be like a good, a good medium between the, the reduction between the bolt movement and the key and it's not too hard to push in and out. So 30 seems to work quite nicely. You could change it up, but it has to be the same at all times. It can never be different. Because of their simple operation and low tolerances, they endure all sorts of environments where other locks would fail and they're built like an absolute tank. However, 
they're not all that secure. In fact, there are tons of videos online showing how to open these locks using all manner of methods, such as simply using a screwdriver and a file to push the teeth over one by one, and well, you saw it in the title of this video, apparently you can even open them using a carrot or a bit of soft wood jammed into the teeth to force them out of the way, and you know we just have to try that out. So, the idea is that you can get a carrot and then you can get the lock and because the lock has these keyways in it instead of using a key you can force a carrot into the slot and it like forces its way through those and forms those slots I gave up my kitchen for this No, I, I need to make it thinner. You know, I don't really imagine any burglars, you know, just kind of sitting there with a carrot and a knife sitting at someone's front door, you know, meticulously slicing it to the right size to break well, in. Well, according to a locksmithing website, although it was translated from Russian, uh, a carrot or a bit of soft wood can work. Well, I think they saw you coming. Yeah, they did. Welcome to Maker's Muse Chef channel where... <laughs> we, watch, we watch Angus lose his fingertips, yes. Sure, That's why I bought a whole bag, because I figured I'd stuff up most of them. So that looks like it should do it. We get the carrot. We put it in. Come on. Come on. He did not just buy an entire bag of carrots to be wasted! Hold on, I need a hammer. Experiment. That's not gonna work. Why? Well, first of all, if someone's already bringing a, a hammer to the scene, I don't think a carrot is pretty much, you know, useful at this point. Oh, look. No. So let's try this more complicated one. Maybe because sure, it's got the work. top and bottom edge, it'll work. Yes, that's it. Ruin the rock lock. Shove it full of carrots so it may never work. That's pretty close. I mean, it kind of does it, but it's it's deforming. It's not... You don't get points for trying. Yeah, it's not actually going. No, you're just shoving carrots into locks. Yes, this is the peak of Angus's career. There we have it. Perhaps with the metal ones, you can get an actual whole carrot and just smash it in and it will shave off into the shape. But um, not in this case. And I don't know why you bother when a screwdriver will do it. I don't know why you bothered in the first place. Now, there does appear to be significantly more complicated designs in existence to mitigate this vulnerability with warding and other mechanisms, but it's pretty obvious that this design would be incredibly costly to manufacture, and the keys are huge and bulky, which is probably why it was only ever used in specific brutal environments, and has been replaced since with more modern designs. If you do have any experience or comments regarding these locks, because I did struggle a bit with the research, please do share me with them in the comments below. I would love to hear it. It's an absolutely fascinating mechanism and regardless of its failings as a secure lock, it could be adapted for all kinds of different things, which I definitely intend to do in future, and I'm very happy to have stumbled across it. I have to get asked on this channel if I'll ever run out of ideas, and I think this is a great example of why that's not happening anytime soon. I had literally never heard of this mechanism until chancing on that video a few months ago, and I love it when stuff like this happens, and I really enjoy sharing my findings with you guys on the channel. If you'd like to 3D print your own replica rack lock, you can find links below, and the files are also released free to my Patreon supporters early, so I really do appreciate your support, it really does help keep the channel going. Here on Make This Muse is my aim to empower creativity through technology, and I look forward to seeing you again very shortly. Catch you later, guys. Bye.